Okay, welcome to the show, so to speak. Uh, what we're going to do tonight, or as this progresses, is lay up these uh, turbine exhaust manifolds. Um, these are, uh, or not exhaust manifolds, exhaust pipes from these computer generated molds. These were generated and printed on a computer, so uh, we're going to give them a try and see how they work. I've got five coats of wax on each one of them. So, the first thing I'm going to do is take my Safety Lease 30, which is a mold release, and we'll just wipe on a nice light coat. Make sure we get good coverage. Okay, we'll let that air dry for about 30 minutes, and we'll be ready to uh, start laying up. Okay, the uh, mold release is dry, and now we're going to start... Uh, Got the pieces of fiberglass cut out. We'll start mixing up some resin. Give this a couple of pumps. Make sure I mix this for at least 30 seconds. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, we'll lay on a coat of resin here. Oops, I don't think they really want resin on there. Start off with a layer of two ounce cloth. It's kind of nice if you can just pick this mold up. <laughs> now it is a pretty small part. This doesn't take very long. I'm going to use uh, a layer of 2 ounce, a layer of 8.7, a layer of 6, and then a layer of 2 ounce. Because this thing doesn't have to be really thick and beefy like my cowls or anything like that. Uh, and the one that's lightweight, just going to be for decoration. Okay, we got some uh, eight and a half. Let me get resin down there. Eight point seven, actually, for the purists. <laughs> yeah, Sal told me when he made these molds, or after he made these molds, that I could also uh, get it in black. So if I ever have to make make another one of these on the computer. I'll have it done in black, then you can really see it wet out nice. It's amazing that, that you know, the cost of the equipment, of course, is very expensive. But uh, 
he said, if I wanted to do a bunch of these, I can buy a cartridge of the, um, it's the, the, the plastic comes in uh, 1 16th, a roll of 1 16th inch, like wire, plastic wire. And then it goes down to a print head and there's a laser that uh, heats up the plastic and then scans across and um, layers down the plastic. And uh, then you've got another material it uses as a fill-in. But he said for about $300, I think is what he said, I could buy a carton of that material and they'd be, he'd be, had, be able to do that for me any time as long as it was Q. Uh, the company doesn't care because they've already got the equipment. So and it costs very little to operate it. It's just the material when you're doing it. But that little, that two hundred dollars you said would make Boku molds, um, huge, you know. But you know, you're limited on this machine to eight by eight. Uh, they're getting a new machine. I think you said it's fifteen by twenty. So that would be uh, maybe you could lay up a towel or something like that. Uh, but you need the compound curves. I don't know how you graph that. Well, of course, I give him the I give him the drawing my 2D drawing, and then he converts it in SOLIDWORKS into a 3D. And then uh, it operates out of the 3D drawing. So uh, I guess if I gave him a good enough drawing of the uh, 2D drawing of the cowl, um, he could convert that to SOLIDWORKS. It might be a little more, it would, of course, be a lot more complicated. If it was just a straight round pan type cow, it wouldn't be that sparkly. But if it's, you know, got bulges and all this stuff in it. But if you could get it drawn, and it really saved you a lot of hours and hours and hours of making a big cow mold. But that's for future. Let's see how this works out before we go jumping into buying my $300 worth of plastic. <laughs> If we can trim this off here a little bit, getting a lot of bulk laying up here. Okay, now I'm going to try and use some peel ply here. I've got a whole bunch of little pieces, triangles cut out here, so I can navigate this stiff stuff around this tube. See how well that works. I don't think that's where I wanted to have it. Actually, it's right there. I want that cut in the center of the curve. There we go. Now, this is where you got to make sure you got rid of all your air bubbles. <laughs> Peel ply is great stuff, but if you if you don't get the air bubbles out, it's not so great because then you got all these little holes to fill, and we don't want to do that. Get ourselves a fancy mold here and, and screw it up by not paying attention to detail. Okay. That
Okay. That's it for now. We'll let this set up overnight. Tomorrow morning we'll pull it off and show you what happens. Okay, just a little add-on here. Um, this is a piece of that plastic that this mold's made out of. Uh, Sal had made this up for me just as a, an example to show me what could be done before we got into this. So this stuff has got kind of a greasy feel to it. So I wanted to see if we could lay up on this without any wax. I just smeared on a couple of uh, layers of uh, mold release and we're going to just put some resin on here. Lay on a piece of fiberglass. And we just see tomorrow morning how easily this comes off. Because that, uh, like I said, that material's got a strange feel to it. It doesn't feel like it needs to be waxed. But this will tell us if you could just lay it up with mold release, that's even better. Right? You know, the first five coats of wax takes a little while, so anything to save some time, that technology, help us out. Okay, I just put a layer of six ounce cloth on there, so uh, that'll cure up. And uh, now I got a little bit of resin left. Let me, uh, I don't know why, <laughs> let me throw on a piece of that 8.7 that's laying around here. Yeah, there we go. Let that wet out. Might as well use up this scrap of peel ply that I messed up on. Oop, are you doing this? Okay. Just thought we'd add this little blurb for your continued enjoyment. <laughs> See you tomorrow morning.